This is not the first video, but also it will not be the last video I will be making about the SLZB ZigBee coordinators from SM Tech Lite. Today we are going to talk about a new feature that was actually added in the 2024.10 release of Home Assistant. In the 2029 release we already received integration for SM Lite products or SLZB coordinators, but it has been updated in the October release. So let's get started with what's new. September release of Home Assistant has brought us the integration for SM Lite products for SLZB06 devices. These are the ZigBee coordinators or routers that you can connect via the Ethernet cable or via the Wi Fi to your Home Assistant. And as I said, I've already did video on those devices, I think I covered 5 coordinators from SM Lite. But this integration has brought a bare minimum. The bare minimum was actually just a couple of sensors, if I'm not mistaken it was temperature sensor for the ZigBee module and also for the SOC or ESP module. But the October release of Home Assistant is bringing us the new and updated integration. And now I can definitely say SM Lite devices are in my opinion, currently the best coordinators, routers that you can use for your ZigBee network, but also as a thread border routers in Home Assistant. Besides the temperature for the core chip or ESP module and also ZigBee chip, you can also see the file system usage and also RAM usage, of course, if you enable those devices. But what will happen if you go to your settings, updates and click on update for the latest release of Home Assistant? And after you update your Home Assistant to 2024.10, you should see something like this. Let's look at each of the entities. First we will start with the controls. Here we have two that are enabled and one that is disabled because I am currently not using VPN connection. And this is also something that I will be recording video on very soon on how you can have WireGuard connection or VPN connection between this coordinator that is for example sitting at your summer house, your parents house, your office or somewhere else and still get all the entities inside your home assistant. We have two switches, one enables you to disable all the LEDs, if you turn it on all the LEDs on the device should be disabled. Since on my device only one LED is active, if I click on this button that LED will be turned off. Next we have LED night mode. Unfortunately I still haven't figured out what's going on with it, but I would presume that this dims the LEDs down a bit so that they are not too bright during the night. In the configuration section we have a lot more entities, with one that is currently not enabled. And this one is ZigBee flash mode. My device is set in such a way that I do not want to auto update ZigBee module, because I'm using thread firmware and I'm not sure if this will mess things up or not. But if you are running this SLZB board as a standard coordinator or router, you can tick this box here and it will auto update when the new firmware is released. Then we have core firmware and ZigBee firmware. These two will show you, they are currently off, if there is a newer firmware available or not. For example, if I click on ZigBee firmware, I can see that installed version is this one here and it is the same version as the latest available version. And here you can also see notes for the latest version. Same goes for the core firmware. If I click on it, I can see that I'm on the version 2.5.2 and the latest version is version 2.3.6. And this is what's new for the 2.3.6. If you need to restart ZigBee or core modules, you can press this button and the device will be restarted, either just the ZigBee module or the core itself. I do repeat core and core is actually ESP32 module and this is actually the UI on the device. This here is the core of the device itself. Next we have diagnostics and I have enabled those four entities. In the diagnostics we have information about the connection. In my case the connection is via the Ethernet cable. If you would be using Wi-Fi you would see here Wi-Fi instead of ETH. We have information about the core chip which was also available in the previous release of Home Assistant. Then we have information if the Ethernet is on or off, file system usage, firmware channel, I'm running the release not the beta channel, RAM usage, ZigBee chip temperature, ZigBee type is thread because as I said I'm not using it as a coordinator or router, I'm using it as a thread border router for the Matter network. 
plus we have core uptime which is last month, Zigbee uptime which is unknown and we also have information if the internet is available, it is on and both VPN and Wi-Fi are off. As far as I know and as far as I have seen so far, this is the only device or the only coordinator that provides so many entities inside Home Assistant. And if we skip everything else, the ability to in future update the devices via the Home Assistant without need to open the browser and go to the device itself or use some kind of add-on or script is something that no other, again as far as I know, device currently allows you to do. And that's precisely why, in my opinion, with these updates to the integration inside Home Assistant, SM Lite Tech devices are currently the best coordinators that you can get for your Zigbee and also Thread Network inside Home Assistant. But add to that also the awesome UI the device already has on its own, where even before this integration was available, you could do so much. For example, you could change mode between the coordinator, router, or matter over thread, which is currently beta, but I have been running it for some time and it's really working great. But also, let's be honest, are those entities really required in Home Assistant? Can you do anything with them? Well, as I said, sure, you can do something with some of them. For example, now you can get a notification if you create automation when there is a new firmware. Then you can go to the release notes and see if you want to update or not. Or you can create an automation in such a way that whenever this notification turns to something else than off, it auto-updates the configuration or it auto-updates the firmware. Same goes for the Zigbee. Would I recommend doing it? Definitely not. I still would recommend that before each and every update, you check on release notes and see if there is anything that can mess up your system. Also, I'm not the person that presses update each and every time the update is released. I also wait to see if there are any issues later on open your GitHub and if there are no issues or if issues are not related to my system, then I would update. This would go for both Zigbee module and also core module. In terms of other automations that you could do, you could potentially create automation that would each night at, for example, 10 p.m. turn this switch off so that the lights are turned off and then at 7, 8 a.m. it would turn the switch back on so that you can see the lights on the device itself. That way you would automate turning off and on the lights so that they don't mess with your sleep, if you of course have this device in your bedroom. Other thing for example that you can do potentially is create sensors or automation that would track the sensors for the temperature for the core and also for the Zigbee module and if it goes for example above 75 degrees centigrade or 80 degrees centigrade it would alarm you and tell you the device is overheating. Plus, there are two additional automations that you can, for example, create. One is the automation that would track the connection mode if it changes from Ethernet to something else to get you notification that something is wrong with your device. For example, it's not working anymore, there is no power for it, etc. etc. Same could be applied both to Ethernet and also Internet. If, for example, either one or the other goes offline to receive notification that something is wrong with the Ethernet cable or that something is wrong with the Internet. I'm not sure if those automations will help you or you will benefit from them, but there are things that you can do even with those entities here. As I said, there is also one pending video that I'll be doing shortly in a couple of weeks and that is on how the VPN connection is working for those devices. That's why I would really recommend to you to check if you are already subscribed or not, so you don't miss that video too. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and if you did enjoy it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it means really a lot to me and it also helps with the YouTube channel algorithms. If you have any kind of a comment, question or suggestion, don't forget to leave it down in a comment section below. And as always, before I end up the video, I would like to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, commented or liked my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and become a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, as always, you can send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then. Bye-bye and have fun.